Welcome to another video. In this video, I'll be talking about some A-level resources that you can make use of. Now, last week I started a paper called 99 Problems, and that was for GCSE exam style questions. It was a paper made up of 99 GCSE level problems. And a couple of people were saying, oh, this would be really useful for A-levels. Uh, so I didn't have anything uh, currently that was made up of, you know, 99 problems of A-level questions. So I started looking around and I found this site and I wanted to go ahead and share it with you because it's similar to that idea of getting a lot of exam practice of different types of topics. And I want to show you how you can use this site to get that sort of practice for A-level mathematics. So the site's called AI Tutor. And uh, here it's bo it boldly says A star A guaranteed or your money back. So that's a pretty good promise right there. And this is going to sound like an ad. I just want to assure you it's not an ad. It's just a resource I've found that I'd like to share with you because there is a free tier on this website and it's pretty good. You get 75 questions free. Um, and it comes with full work solutions as well. So that's one of the main reasons I'm sharing it. I think that's a pretty good deal. Uh, you get the full work solutions for all of the questions that you try. Um, so uh, it, once you sign up, it's really easy to sign up. You just need to have an email address. You don't need to put in any payment details or anything. So sign up. Uh, I think you get a screen like this where it has a dashboard. Uh, so go into the dashboard and you'll get a view like this. So you can choose between Mathematics AS or Mathematics A2. So I'm on A2 right now. And you can see here it has my information and I've chosen the Ed Excel exam board. I think they have the all the other exam boards, so AQA and OCR as well. Um, and it says you have 72 questions and no exams left this month. So I'm on the free tier. I haven't paid anything for this. Um, and you can see I've already looked at three questions. As I said, you get 75 per month, I believe, for free, and you get one exam, uh, one full exam for free as well. So I've already clicked on the exam. I didn't go through the whole thing. I just clicked it and clicked out of it. And so that counts as a use, I guess. Um, so if you do sign up to this, make sure that you don't click on the exam button until you actually want to give it a go, because then I think uh, it'll shut off that access and say no exams left. Down here, it says, uh, has a quiz mode, which I believe is like a random selection of topics and then optimize learns. So it's called AI Tutor for a reason. I believe that they uh, kind of, after you use it for a bit of time, they learn your weaknesses and then they can uh, kind of optimize the questions towards you. So I, again, I'm not sure how well that works, but it sounds pretty good. Um, okay, so then uh, if we want to have a go at a particular topic, you can see the topics list down here. Um, and this is for A level A2, as I said. Um, so if we want to have a go at say um, hypothesis testing, for example, you can see it says learn and then practice. Um, so learn, if you click on learn, they have some free video lessons, uh, which are pretty good. I watched some of it and it's, it's great, really. It's really good content. And then they have some premium content as well, which I believe is for the paid uh, version. Um, now I think it's about eight pounds per month. If you did want to get that premium tier, and uh, I think you also get 14 days free if you sign up. You can try the premium stuff for 14 days and see if it's uh, if you want to pay for it. Uh, okay, so then also uh, I reached out to the people running the site and they were nice enough to say, okay, if you give us a shout out, then we can offer 30% off to your viewers. So if you use the code MathsExplain30, you can get 30% off if you do want to use the, the paid version of this site. Uh, again, this is not an ad. I'm just offering some resources. Okay, so if we wanna go ahead and practice some hypothesis testing, let's go ahead and click on practice and have a go at a few problems. Uh, so let's go. All right, this looks like some easier style questions. When I started this before, it started off, it started me off on a seven mark question. So you can get a real mix of questions. There's some really good questions in here and obviously some one mark, two mark questions as well. So that's really good. Um, so the first one is saying, state what the product momentum correlation coefficient describes. Uh, well, that's the, the strength of the relationship between the variables. Um, so once you have an answer, click show answers and it gives you a, a list of different uh, options. And then uh, we want the one that says, uh, 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 which one describes a linear correlation, I believe would be the right one. Um, so let's go ahead and click linear. And it says you should memorize this product moment correlation uh, describes a linear correlation between new variables. Okay, 
Uh, so we got that one correct. I believe it shows up red if you get it wrong and it gives you a nice answer there, right? It gives you a nice worded answer. That's helpful for your revision. It's not just some kind of cryptic uh, answer like in a mark scheme, it's actually uh, written out well for you. Okay, so part B says, what is the range of the product moment correlation coefficient? So it's up to one, zero to one, I believe. Uh, so, or R less than or equal to one. Uh, so I'm going to go with this one here. Oh, whoops. Okay, so you can see it goes red when you get one wrong. And of course, the uh, product moment correlation coefficient can be negative one as well. Uh, so it says you should memorize this the range of the product moment correlation coefficient is negative one to one. Uh, R equal to negative one represents a perfect negative correlation. R equal to one represents a perfect positive correlation and R equals zero represents no linear correlation, but there still could be a non-linear correlation. Okay, so that's really helpful. So if I were to click uh, R less than one, uh, then it corrects me and says what a negative one uh, actually means. It's a negative correlation. So that would be really helpful for my revision. Okay, let's go ahead and have a go at another one. If a random sample of size n is taken from a random variable that is normally distributed with mean uh, mu and standard deviation sigma, what is the distribution of the sample mean uh, x bar? So I believe the correct answer there would be it's also normally distributed. Yeah, I'd say in an exam, I would say x bar is also normally distributed. Let's see, maybe I'm wrong. Okay, yeah, so I would say it's, oh, you need to use the correct notation. Uh, now the, um, the standard error of the mean is written as sigma squared over n. So I believe this is the correct answer. This is kind of nerve wracking, um, but let's see. Phew, green this time. You need to learn this. If we take a sample of n from a random variable x that is normally distributed as, uh, well, that's just notation, where mu is the mean and sigma is the standard deviation, the sample mean x bar is normally distributed as uh, mu being the mean and sigma squared over n being the standard deviation. So great, this is one of the main reasons I'm recommending this um, because it not only gives you like just an answer, but it also gives you a nice explanation uh, if you weren't sure why that is the correct answer. All right, let's just do a couple more. Um, part A says random variable X is normally distributed when mean mu equals 185 and a standard deviation sigma equals five. If a random sample of size 30 is taken from X, then what is the distribution of the sample mean X bar? Give your answer to two decimal places where applicable. We just uh, kind of gave the answer to this in the previous question. Uh, the, mu, the mean is going to be the same, 185, and the standard deviation is now going to be sigma squared on N. So it's going to be 25 on 30. Uh, so, in, uh, so if we were to use the correct notation, we would be writing uh, N uh, with uh, 185 being the mean and then 25 on 30 being the standard error of the mean. Uh, so let's hope that's in here somewhere. I guess you could simplify this by dividing by five, uh, but let's see. Uh, so this option has the only correct mean, I believe. Um, hopefully, let's see how we go. So yes, we've got a green, so that means we're correct. And they're telling us the standard error of the mean is 0.83. Uh, so then we need to find the square root of that actually. So I've written this wrong. This should be uh, this should be the square root of 25 on 30. And then we need to square that. Uh, so this is kind of wrong, but based on process of elimination, uh, I got that correct. Okay, so that was the end. Uh, let's see, so that was hypothesis testing. Um, so I'm on 1.5%, so I can go again on this topic. So let's do another one. Um, so part A, so again, I guess you get sets of three questions each time you click on it. Um, so let's see, what's this talking about? So calculate the PMCC of the following data, give your answer to five decimal places. So that's the product moment correlation coefficient. To do this, you will need a calculator and uh, you need to create some lists. So if you go into here, um, uh, well, however your calculator has lists, you'll need to find that on your calculator and enter this data on uh, in the lists like so. 
Um, so I'm doing the X values at the moment and then we'll go ahead and do the Y values. Okay, so I've entered those uh, values in the lists. L1 is X, L2 is Y. And weirdly, I also have to uh, do something else to this calculator. I have to turn on diagnostics. Um, now, I'm not sure if you have to do this on your calculator or not, but you should check out how to calculate the product moment correlation coefficient with your particular calculator um, uh, because you will definitely need to be able to do that in an exam. Uh, so diag diagnostics is on. Then I want to go back into statistics, go to calc and then go to lin reg. Um, again, it might be called something different on your calculator, but on mine, it's called lin reg standing for linear regression model. And if I go ahead and calculate that for list one and list two, uh, then it should give me the statistics. So here it gives me my R value. Uh, so 0 0.033, etc., would be my answer. So let's hope that that's on there. Oh, to five decimal places. So this would be 0 0.03331. All right, so let's see. Uh, yeah, here we go. I believe this will be the correct answer. Let's see, green. Okay, good. So here it gives you uh, another way to do it. So it says find the PMCCR for the above data. We're going to need to use our calculator. We want to select the statistics option and choose Y equals A plus BX. Okay, so that's similar. And here it says choose the regression calc option. So maybe that's what it looks like on your calculator. Maybe it's called regression calc. Again, on mine, it was called lin reg. Okay, great. Let's go on to number two. You've calculated that I equals negative one for the set of data. What kind of correlation does this show? Uh, well, that's a negative correlation. Let's see if that's what they're after. Uh, strong, definitely a strong or even a perfect negative correlation. Yeah, so you can see actually, you know, we don't always have the correct language. So having these options actually helps you to develop your vocabulary around A-level mathematics. So that's really good as well. So I'm going to say perfect negative correlation. And uh, again, it gives you some helpful tips there. Let's go on to part B, fill in the values of log Y for the following bivariate data. Um, so we need to find log Y. So I guess we just need to find the log of each of these. Um, and I guess that's log base 10 because it doesn't give a base. Um, but let's go ahead and uh, find the logs of those. So let's say log of seven, 0.845 log of three, uh, 0.4771. Um, okay, let's keep going. Log seven again. Well, it's going to be the same actually. Log six is what I want next. 0.778 log five and then log one as well. Uh, oh, well, log one I should have known is zero. Didn't even need to calculate that. Okay, let's see. Um, so it has some options here. I believe this is the one that I wanted, 0.845. Uh, we did six, hang on, one, two, three, four was six. Yes, seven and zero. So this I believe would be the correct answer there. Okay, and then a couple more questions. So what is the PMCC of X and log Y? All right, so what we want to do here is uh, we want to input all of that data into a list again. Um, so let's go ahead and do that. When you're inputting the Y values, you can put in the log of the number. So rather than putting in these decimals, you can put in the actual uh, calculation and it'll give you the, the value itself. Uh, so log of three, log of seven. Okay, so once you've got those lists in, let's go ahead and calculate the R value. Uh, so lin reg again for list one and list two. And we get uh, negative 0.1304. So hopefully that's in there somewhere. Negative 0.13048. Okay, great. All right, almost there. Next one. Oh, I've got to go next. And the last one is you are given a set of data of size 50 and you calculate the PMCC as R equal to negative 0.2981. Do you have evidence of negative correlation? Test at the 1% level. Okay, it's good to see a bit of a more difficult question here because I was doing this before and it was giving me, uh, you know, 
five, six, seven mark questions. So uh, we have a, uh, a sample size of 50. So we've got an N of 50 and we have an R equal to uh, negative 0.2981. Um, so for this, you want to go to your A-level booklet, which is uh, you can get for free from the Edexcel website. And you want to go to the product moment correlation coefficient table. Here it is. So critical values for correlation coefficients. Uh, and here is the product moment coefficient. Um, so what are we looking for here? We have a sample size of 50. So go down to 50. And um, we're looking at the 1% level of significance. So that's 0.01. So go across to 0.01. And we have a critical value of 0.3281. So let's go ahead and write that down. Um, so our critical value equals uh, 0.3281. Then uh, let's go back. So do we have evidence of negative correlation? So even though this is a negative and that doesn't look like a two, that should be a two there, 0.2981, even though it's negative, it needs to be, uh, the magnitude of it needs to be greater than the critical value. And you can see that um, well, let's say the magnitude of R is less than uh, 0.3281. Therefore, we do not have evidence of negative correlation. And I believe this should say of the population, uh, but maybe they don't need to state that. Maybe uh, that's just something that's usually added in, but you don't actually need to state that. Anyways, uh, we do not have evidence because uh, R is less than the critical value. Hopefully that's on there. Um, there is, uh, so there's insufficient evidence would be my answer. Let's see. So yes, we got that correct. And then it gives you this really detailed answer here of how to set that up, which is great. Um, I think that's awesome because hypothesis testing is, uh, can be a tricky topic and, um, you know, these detailed answers here really do help if you're unsure as to how, you know, how to get the correct answer there. Um, so here you can see they got that critical value and they even explain why you can uh, write it as a negative. Uh, so since we're testing for negative correlation, we need to take the negative of this value. Um, so that's really helpful. You can see that they're doing it in a different method to me um, and uh, maybe that I should take that on board for my own notes as well. Okay, so let's end that particular one. Okay, so that's all the current revision I'm going to do uh, in this video. Um, again, just a resource for you that you can uh, use uh, similar to that 99 problems that I did for GCSE uh, exam questions. So hopefully this is useful to you. Um, again, it's called AI Tutor, AI Tutor. I'll put a link to that in the description. I'll put the coupon code if you're interested in um, getting the premium access to this website. Um, again, uh, uh, let's actually see what the cost is. So if we go to upgrade, seven pounds per month. So I was wrong when I said eight pounds. It's seven pounds per month. You can see it offers a two week trial uh, if you want to try that out. And again, I checked out some of their lessons. They're really good. They're really useful and really well explained. Uh, so yeah, go ahead. You can see it's completely free if you want it to be. Um, and again, you can upgrade if you want to. Uh, so hopefully you found this useful. Uh, please leave a like if you did. Subscribe if you want to see more content and I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.